Hey all. So, bit of a wait on this one because some stuff came up, but I am excited to finally be talking about Lady Deathstrike. She has a completely unique play style. There are some commonalities with other champions, but in the end, she's just not really like anyone else, and the result is very interesting and very fun. The core of her kit really is ferocity, because more than anything else, she feels like a berserker within the tech class, but it's not nearly as out of control as that might read at first, or as she might feel before you really get more used to her. So, let's go through some of the strengths and weaknesses. First off, she is very good at special tanking. It does kind of depend on the special, and we'll talk about that a little bit more later. But for specials that just hit and do a lot of damage, she can be really, really good at brushing them off almost entirely. Ferocity itself, the core of her kit, once you get into it, can last an extremely long time. So once you're ramped, you can have it for the rest of the fight, as long as you play a certain way. And she has some of the easiest access to heal block in the entire game. Now, on the weakness side of things, she does care quite a bit about her armor ups. And so armor breaks, or specifically her one armor up buff getting nullified, are a real problem. Holds her back in a bunch of different ways. She has pretty low health. And so while she has a lot of really strong tanky characteristics, if any of them fall through, you can feel it in a hurry. Almost all of her damage is rupture-based, and so against somebody who doesn't feel those, she's going to slow down significantly, or if somebody has very high physical resistance, that's also a problem. And she's not easy to play. She is probably easier to play than you will think at first as we go through this kit but I'm not going to sugarcoat it. This is somebody who does require you to change your defaults and who then has some risk from you doing so. So if that is not your kind of character, then she may not be for you. So first off, incoming bleeds and poisons have their potency reduced by 90% and the willpower mastery itself is reduced by 50 so for those of you who like the recoil masteries, yes, she can absolutely use them. This is a lot of potential healing, even with willpower cut in half. Even if you are more like me and you never use the recoil masteries, this is still going to allow her to deal with poison or bleed nodes, something like biohazard, pretty darn efficiently. Against mutants, her ability accuracy cannot be modified, so she works just fine against Magneto or Domino. And all of her nail attacks inflict a rupture debuff, dealing damage based on her armor rating, directly on her armor rating, over 6 seconds. So you see the dev note here specifying that the only hits that aren't nail attacks are her final light attack and the final hit of the special one, but let's spend some time talking about that armor rating part. So this is very cool in a lot of ways because armor rating will not go up and down if you have weakness on yourself, right? You don't have to worry about dealing with that. It just does the damage. And it can go up as your armor increases, which makes um, armor an interesting stat focus choice for her as a 7 star. It means that as she gains armor ups, she will continue to do more damage. There are nodes in incursions or in some story content that also grant you armor ups. Those are really, really good for her damage. There are a number of interesting things about this, but there are also a few either neutrals or negatives. And one is that attack rating does not increase her rupture damage. So we just talked about how she can take very little damage and net positive on healing from Liquid Courage and Double Edge, but the attack bonus is only going to affect her actual landed hits, not her ruptures, which are normally the lion's share of her output. Similarly, there are other places in her kit that increase attack rating. Those are not going to directly boost her armor. 
and therefore, or sorry, are not going directly boost her ruptures because it doesn't affect her armor. Another thing you're going to have to be aware of is that because your armor rating can go to zero, can even go negative, unlike attack, which is capped at 10%, no matter how many weakness effects you have on you, her rupture damage can actually go to zero. I was testing her in some playtests, and I picked up a number of... Or no, it was the other way around. She was a defender, and I had put several armor breaks on her, and then I got hit and got several ruptures on me. They all did zero damage. So... It's a very interesting ability with a lot of unusual applications. It has both pros and cons, so just keep it in mind when you're evaluating if she's the right one for a fight. If you understand the implications of it, I do think it can be more of an asset than a detriment. Ferocity itself is the core of her kit, like we mentioned earlier, and you are going to gain ferocity charges as you inflict ruptures, or as you are struck, obviously the struck trigger is more important on defense, and you get one all the time, so one per rupture, or one per times that Lady Deathstrike is struck, plus an additional one per armor up buff. Now, she only has one true armor up buff in her kit, the rest of the effects are passives, so most of the time this will just be two, but we talked about how certain nodes and incursions and story content can cause her to go off. This also means that if you see her on nodes in war, that potentially give her extra armor up buffs, you're going to want to be careful about that because she will ramp faster. The other important thing to note with this is that Lady Deathstrike has 7 hit combos. So for somebody else, this might read as 10 charges per 5 hit combo. For her, this is 14, because you get 2 hits on each medium. Medium, light, 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 medium, 7 hits, 14 ruptures, or sorry, 7 hits, 7 ruptures, 14 ferocity charges. When you get to 75, which if you do the math real quick, is going to be 5 combos, and then a little bit into the next one, you're going to gain a ferocity passive. And it says it's for three seconds, but it's really important to then go forward and catch that it starts paused. So this is only three seconds if you've done something to unpause it, right? This can go on forever. So you're ramping to ferocity, this is your big payout, and you can potentially hold it for the rest of the fight. Now it unpauses when she blocks an attack, and that is a pretty high cost if you play normally because most of us block attacks during most fights. The thing is with her, you often don't need to, but we'll kind of get into some of those reasons later and why this actually isn't as much of a cost as it might seem, but you are definitely going to need to unlearn some muscle memory to allow yourself to not block as you're doing this. And then while there are no armor up effects active, Ferocity expires faster. This is more for defense, so that if you are stripping her armor away, you don't have to wait the full nine seconds, which can be tough. It can only be four and a half, and then it's gone. While Ferocity is active, you gain 2,000 attack rating, which is going to be about half of what she has. And remember, this affects her actual hit damage. This is not going to directly boost the ruptures. But obviously, doing significantly more hit damage is going to add up over the course of the fight. Special attacks become passively unblockable, and she cannot gain new Ferocity charges. So while Ferocity is at active, if the opponent activates a special one or two, you have a chance to go unstoppable. Now, this can get to 100% if you have four armor up effects, and we'll talk about how you get more armor ups later. But if this is guaranteed and you are at 100% chance to go unstoppable, this is pretty powerful because even before we get to her ability to regen to tank specials, this means that you don't really have to worry about blocking because you can keep charging into the opponent they throw their special into you, sure, 
maybe that first hit hits you, but it doesn't do that much damage, and you are unstoppable, so you can dash back and avoid the rest. So you can actually afford to be a lot more reckless with her than you otherwise would. It takes some getting used to, but it is extremely powerful. You also reduce the opponent's offensive ability accuracy by up to 75% once you're at 5 armor ups. But unduped um, or early in the fight, this is going to be lower. This is not going to fully stop burst damage or damage over time effects or anything like that from your opponent. But it is going to reduce how much gets through while you are tanking things. Additionally, on defense, these two abilities together make her quite annoying because if you are not dealing with her armor ups, if you're not dealing with ferocity, she can go unstoppable, which means you get hit, and also your specials are less likely to work. So, moving on to the armors themselves, you start each fight with an indefinite armor up buff. It's not that strong an armor up buff, but it is going to increase your rupture damage which also means that it's kind of the baseline for your rupture damage because you expect to have this. And if it's removed, then it comes back after 12 seconds. Kind of the standard language there. Every 25 hits, you get an indefinite armor up passive. Again, small, but this is going to increase your rupture damage. This is going to reduce your opponent's offensive ability accuracy doing, during their specials. This is going to increase the chance of you going unstoppable when they throw them. You do have a chance to lose these passives when struck or while blocking while you're in ferocity. So you, again, another reason to be more aggro. This is also going to be how you're hoping to strip these away from a defending Lady Deathstrike so that you don't have to worry about her going unstoppable. And remember, 25 hits is not quite the ask that it seems because she has double hit mediums, and so her combo count is always going to be a bit more inflated. This takes a while to ramp, and you have to be careful on the way up, but it does ramp. Her regen rate cannot be modified at all, so another thing about the Liquid Courage and Double Edge Masteries, or just taking Poison Nodes, she takes less damage from them, and Poison does not reduce her healing. So she is getting the full 50% of the Willpower Mastery, not half of it that is then reduced by the 30% that Poison normally does. True Damage Hits are going to remove one Regen Effect. That comes uh, online in the next section. We'll talk about it there. But Heal Block Effects on her are immediately removed. She is functionally immune to Heal Block. However, um, it does check and see how long that heal block would have been, and turns off willpower for that duration. So she can still get all of the rest of her healing, because the rest of her healing is baked into how she's supposed to function, but you can turn off willpower with her heal blocks. This also means that if you take her into a heal block node on, say, Path 4 and Alliance War, she won't get willpower from the various debuffs. She won't have the heal block on her, and so if that was a debuff you were worried about causing the opponent to go unstoppable or something, then that's good. It won't be sitting on her, but you won't have willpower. So it's just something to keep in mind. So, now we get to the regen effect. When she's struck by a special 1 or 2, she gains a nanobot regenerator passive for the duration of the special attack, and it is going to passively regen 90% of hit damage over the next half second. So hit damage refers to the white, yellow, or orange numbers themselves. This is not going to capture any red numbers, any burst damage, any damage over time effects. That will not be regened, but hit damage itself will be. So remember that all of those red numbers are less likely to get in in the first place because she's reducing offensive ability accuracy, but you do kind of want to Think about, before you head into a fight, what kinds of damage does your opponent have? Because if their specials are dangerous because they're just going to hit you and kill you, like say, I don't know, Colossus, then she has almost nothing to fear from him because she can tank all of those big special hits, regen 90% back right away, no danger. 
if you're dealing with somebody like, say, Absorbing Man, where they have burst damage, and if they're refined, its ability accuracy cannot be modified, that would be a very dangerous fight for Lady Deathstrike to take, because she would have much less of an ability to use this region and heal back from what she's taking. Additionally, while suffering from bleed or poison, you get an additional 20% flat on this, so you regen 110%. It's now a net positive regen. So if you're using Liquid Courage or Double Edge with her, you can actually heal from every special that you take to the face. Very fun. But of course, if she does not have her personal armor up buff, this is disabled. So if her armor ups are being controlled, she basically falls apart. She can't do damage through her ruptures. She can't go unstoppable. She ramps into ferocity more slowly. She doesn't have access to her regen. She really wants those armor ups, but it's a pretty potent kit while she has them online. While the regenerator is active, she is immune to armor breaks and rupture debuffs. This is important because it means that you can't break the armor with a special attack because she's immune to armor breaks, right? So somebody who has armor breaks on their basics, like Medusa, is very good for her. You can just strip away the armor, you don't have to worry about this immunity. But somebody like King Groot, who only has armor break in their special one, is not going to be able to efficiently deal with her. So think about where your armor breaks are, not just the fact that you have them. And then when intercepted, this regen is going to get weaker for 15 seconds. This can stack up to five times, and it keeps refreshing every time it happens. That means that if you are able to intercept her five times, and then intercept her again once every 15 seconds, you can keep this regen down by half. Now, that may not be enough if you are still dealing with her going unstoppable during ferocity, <laughs> but it is at least one less thing you have to worry about because maybe your specials can actually do damage. Moving on to the heal block, this is just on her second medium attack, and you get a six second heal block debuff, and it's paused during special attacks. Already really solid high uptime on heal block. It's not a passive, so it can get shrugged, but really easy to access, and you get this extra clause, mutants cannot go unstoppable or unblockable, while heal blocked, which completely shuts off Wolverine Weapon X. No healing, no unblockable, no unstoppable, and has some nice utility outside of that as well. Moving on to the special one, on activation you're going to get a Torment debuff for the duration of the special, and any damaging debuffs, read ruptures, um, are going to last six seconds longer, and they're paused during this special. So the main reason to use this special is to ramp up your ruptures. If you are already sitting on a good chunk of armor ups, or if you are facing somebody where you just don't think you're going to be doing much actual hit damage and you just want uh, ruptures, 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 then special one is normally pretty good. With one caveat we'll get to in a second. If you're already in Ferocity when you throw this, then it's going to get extra attack rating, doubling what you get from Ferocity itself. Remember that doesn't affect the ruptures, but you are going to hit significantly harder with that extra 4,000 attack. And the Torment lasts for 8 seconds after the end of the special, allowing you to continue to inflict longer, more damaging ruptures with your basics after the special ends. The special 2 is going to give you 25 ferocity charges if you're not already in ferocity. But honestly, that is almost never going to be how you use it. Because this second bullet is possibly the most important one in her whole kit. If you already have ferocity active when you throw the special two, you are going to regain it as though you didn't have it and pause it with its duration increased by six seconds. So what this means is that no matter where you are on your ferocity timer, it gets refreshed to full and lasts nine whole seconds. And now you have a safety net, because if ferocity unpauses, then as long as you don't block again for three seconds, it will pause again. 
So this is going to allow you to basically block twice in between each special two. That's a lot less than you might for somebody else, but especially on somebody who can go unstoppable during the opponent's specials, it is often enough. You're usually choosing one moment to block in a difficult special animation to make sure you don't get wrecked by some dangerous burst of damage or something. And then you're dexing the rest and you are going right back into your aggressive playstyle and gunning it for the next special two, during which you can reset this clock and buy yourself additional safety nets. And so this right here is why, although the special one ramps your damage from ruptures really well, I would pretty much always go to the special two first. Remember how we talked about getting into ferocity requires five full combos and then some? That is usually going to put you in between two and three bars of power. So you want to turn on ferocity and then throw the special two You've now set up your guardrails. It is easier to play the way that Lady Deathstrike wants you to play, and then you can loop special ones for damage. I also want to point out, all of this talk about no block, I haven't actually said this yet, you can block all you want before you turn on Ferocity. So for that first two and a half bars, for that first 75 charges, you can block whenever you want. It doesn't matter, you can parry, into all of your combos, you don't have to play Berserk until you turn on Ferocity. And by the time you turn on Ferocity, you probably have two bars, and so you don't ever really have to play her without these guardrails. You can head straight for the special two, blocking as you go, and only once that effect turns on that you've been headed towards, do you now have to start thinking about okay, well, I don't want to block, so I'm going to be more aggro, I'm going to backdraft intercept, I'm going to let specials hit me in the face if the opponent throws them, because I'm going to go unstoppable and regen, and I don't care. And if I need to block every once in a while to control tempo to deal with a particularly dangerous hit of a special attack, I can, because I have this guardrail up. What I would often do is go special two into special ones looped, like I said, in a vanilla fight. And in a more complex one where I'm worried about using up those free pauses, I probably just do nothing but loop special two. Now, sometimes the special three is going to be helpful. This is pretty much always going to be a long fight ramp effect, which is fairly typical of special threes. But if you're in a long fight, you can go for this. I would recommend normally going for this after you've thrown the special two so that you have the guardrails up and then you're also going to get a relentless passive increasing your attack bonuses from ferocity even further remember that is for your hit damage not your ruptures and it allows your ruptures to be inflicted through block this is really nice because if you're playing that aggro backdraft play style sometimes the opponent's going to block and so sometimes you're going to do medium light or something into their block. It is really nice when that applies two or three ruptures instead of just doing stone nothing. So really nice for just continuing to ramp her damage the way you want to play her anyway. This lasts for 30 seconds, but is also paused while Ferocity is active. The fact that this is so much longer than Ferocity means that as long as you are staying on top of playing the rest of her well, you can throw this and never think about it again. Because you'll have Relentless up for 30 seconds. You can go through your whole, like, ferocity almost expires several times because you keep looping special threes and not lose even a single second on Relentless. If you actually lose ferocity, then it will start ticking down. But that means you have 30 seconds to get back into ferocity. For the SIG ability, this is going to reduce the number of combo that you need to get an armor up passive to 15, and increase the max stacks from 3 to 7. So we talked about how she already has an inflated combo count. An unduped Lady Deathstrike, like we talked about, is probably going to have somewhere around a combo of 30 or so when she goes into Ferocity. Unduped, that's only one extra armor up, right? And so you turn on Ferocity, and you only have a 50% chance to go unstoppable. 
you're only reducing offensive ability accuracy by 30%. That's significant, but it doesn't feel safe yet, right? If you're playing a duped Lady Death Strike and that threshold is only 15, then at a combo of 30, you already have three armor ups. You're reducing offensive ability accuracy by 45%. You have a 75% chance to go unstoppable, and you're not that far off from gaining another armor up and getting the unstoppable chance up to 100. So really big boost in reliability there. It smooths out the rotation quite a bit. And getting more armor ups and having a higher ceiling of armor ups is going to significantly up your rupture damage because you're getting those online faster. It's affecting your rupture damage faster. And you get four more of them boosting your ruptures pretty significantly. So the dupe is really big for her damage ceiling. Ferocity is also going to increase the potency of ruptures directly per armor up, because ferocity itself is normally just that attack bonus, right? Doesn't affect the ruptures. When you're duped, now it does. And this last bullet is a bit more niche, but if your opponent is trying to heal through your heal block, you are going to get some additional ruptures for every threshold of health that you stop them from healing. Nice little bonus there. Moving on to synergies, uh, with the various Wolverines, she gets a Crossfight Fury buff when defeating X-Men, increasing attack rating. It's 20%, that's quite nice. Again, doesn't directly affect your ruptures, this is more um, just your hit damage. If you're defeating Wolverine specifically, then that's going to increase by 200%, and so you get a 60% attack rating. Again, really nice boost to your hit damage. Reminder that it doesn't directly affect your ruptures. Old Man Logan, uh, with her on the team, his Furies are going to last longer, and they're paused during specials. Really strong. And then the Wolverines themselves, not Laura, but the two Logans, are going to get an ability to apply passive bleeds when bleed debuffs are purified off the opponent. So a really nice bonus there. It's not quite as much damage, but it's better than not getting anything when those debuffs are purified for sure. With Omega Sentinel and Sentinel, Lady Deathstrike is going to get stronger armor ups, which means stronger ruptures. Sentinel gets much longer heal blocks, and inflicting a heal block also gives you this chunky cowardice, reducing how much damage you take from opponent specials, and also turning off Kitty Pride. Omega Sentinel gets a longer pause duration, making her rotation much easier to run through. And then we also have this synergy with Anti-Venom, where Lady Deathstrike is going to gain the ability to gain power hitting into block if she has both Relentless and Ferocity up, which is really nice. Um, we talked about how it's already something you're going to be doing in her playstyle. Now it's looping you back to more unblockable special ones and special twos. Really solid bonus there. And then this synergy is just massive for Anti-Venom. You refresh the Evolved Mutation passive, allowing you to cycle through your debuffs faster. And the special 2 has a 50% chance to not consume the genetic memory debuffs when generating fury passives, meaning that you can keep your ramp as you cash out for the furies. This is going to make Anti-Venom a lot more reliable for fights where he needs that utility, needs that heal reversal, needs that disorient to stay on top of things, but still would like to do some damage other than heal reversal over the course of the fight. Really big upgrade to him. And that's Lady Deathstrike. Like I kind of laid out, I really do think that she does such a great job of capturing the Berserker playstyle because she feels reckless. You're always going ham at the opponent. You're just slashing away at them, stacking up all these ruptures. You are never blocking because you're not supposed to. You're just going, 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 not caring if you get hit. And so the character fantasy of it is amazing, but then you also have these really nice guardrails so that she's not as risky as that sounds. 
You have the ability to block all the way up until Ferocity turns on. You have the special two giving you those nice little guardrails so that you can block a few times when you need to. You have the ability to go unstoppable, which is not just annoying as a defender. It means that if you get hit, you can then safely dex the rest of the special because you didn't get staggered by that first hit and you're now signed up for eating the whole thing. You regenerate the hit damage. It's just a really solid suite of abilities that come together to build a berserker tech. She kind of feels like a tech wolverine the same way that Weapon X feels berserk. It's a really neat kit, and if any part of that interests you, or just if you want her really strong heal block rupture utility, I encourage you to check her out. Hope you guys enjoyed this one, and until next time, thanks so much for watching, and take care.